Well, let's read more of this book, shall we? Chapter 14, Payday. Let me first assure you that the element is quite safe. I've found a good home for it. I protect its safety like I protect my own skin, you might say. What a subtle hint that is as to where somebody's hidden something. I wonder where. We're back with Kaladin now, who is trying to kick off a harsh but beloved coach storyline as he drags everybody out of bed. You know, all the people from Bridge Forge. Remember them? The people that he runs about with the bridge. My chair's going round. There we go. The people that he runs about with the bridge with. Them. Bridge four. Normally they just laze about between bridge runs because they're so harsh, but he has them train so that next time they do a bridge run it's not gonna be so horrible because they'll be a bit more physically capable of doing it. But they're not particularly interested. And the whole coach storyline pretty much fizzles away as soon as he starts to try and initiate it. So Kaladin goes and gets his pay from Gaz and he makes sure to take it all and then give a bit back to Gaz, so that he's giving something to Gaz instead of just taking less from him, because then there'll be more of a, you know, the, a conscious sort of association with the fact that he's giving money to Gaz, and Gaz will see that as a thing, and, you know. And then, he gets all Richard Ryle about it. He goes and finds a big bit of wood. Ooh, the biggest bit of wood there is. It's just a very, very big bit of wood, and he goes running about with it, back and forth, muscles gleaming with moral clarity, and everyone gathers round to just squirt adoration at him as he works like a superman. But then he goes and collapses in private, and still has something important to say, which is that she's glad that he didn't lie to Gaz, that he kept his word, because the thing is, that means that she can comprehend what a lie is. Which is weird, for a spren, which is just supposed to be like a little moat of dust in the air. I mean, what the hell? How can you understand the concept of lies? Why am I a sort of turkey? So, a lot of very enthusiastic people aiming their enthusiasm at Kaladin in this chapter. My response to the chapter, not as enthusiastic as them. I'm worrying that the arc of Kaladin earning his team's respect and admiration is going to be a bit sort of truthy, with Kaladin as this kind of puzzled ubermensch who everyone's in awe of because he can just lift heavy objects or whatever. Also slightly disappointed that we're actually still here at all. I mean, come on Kaladin, burn the place down and escape or whatever. Are we going to really have to have this whole story of him being this slave for the whole time, really? I'm hoping Sanderson's got a good reason to be writing this this way, because it can't be fun to write about a confined character. Well, yes it can, but for this long? And then yeah, it does get quite sort of truth, and he mans around being strong and impressive, and everyone's like, yeah dude, wow. But hey, we learn about some stuff. We learn about laughter spren, minnow-like silver spirits that zip about in circular patterns. We meet a youthful-faced bridgeman called Dunny. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? That's Australian for toilet! We find out about the Horn Eaters. They're actually called the Unkalaki, but most people call them the Horn Eaters. And they're a group from central Roshar, near Jarkeved. And they speak like comedy foreigners. He's crazy, man! We meet Leighton, a tall, stout bridgeman with curly hair. We find out the Makabaki are people with dark brown skin and black hair. We meet a guy called Moash, who is strong and lean, and Kaladin makes an example out of him by punching him in the stomach and dragging him out of bed. There's a folk reference to something called the Night Watcher, which can be described as bringing death and lies wherever they go. Whew. And we meet Rock, a hefty, Thick-limbed Unkalaki Bridgeman. Tanned skin, deep red hair, nearly seven feet tall, great big arms, great big torso, big strong man. And Sigzil, who has dark brown skin and black hair, making him again Makabaki, from southwestern Roshar. And he's the only Bridge 4 member without a beard, and his smooth accent makes him probably Azish or Emuli. 